Right, how's the positioning? Hopefully it's alright. Yep. Seems okay. And let me just get the chat up so I can see this. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Sounds okay to me. Fantastic. Good. Right, how are we doing? Okay, we've got the usual thing. This is um, the first 20 minutes. Every starts to come in. So if you've logged into the vlog, just skip forward a little bit if you want to see the playthrough of the secluded opening. Just like to give it a little bit of time before we uh, get into the nitty gritty. So, yeah, this isn't my usual day for streaming. So I would normally do Thursdays, but because last week I didn't do Thursday, I'm doing an extra one this week, hence the Tuesday stream, and then we'll do a Thursday stream as well. Probably carrying on with this secluded opening, um, which is part of the, let me just slightly reposition this camera. It's always tricky to get these things exactly right. That looks better. Okay. All right, so it's been a busy week. I've come back and um, having been away for a week and I've uh, been doing some work but also trying to relax a little bit see some family over the Easter holiday you know that type of thing and hopefully the sound is okay this is, I've printed out here, this is the, hey Nick, yeah I know, sorry about that, it's still like a bonus stream, look at it that way, and uh, just to have a look at the secluded opening, I just have to do leave a little bit of a, got a few marks on here, hey Mark, prestige, how you doing? Evening, Mr. Cup of Streams, so good to catch up, catch one now. Thank you, thank you for being here. Yeah, it's um, it's a bit of an odd one. Tuesday night, I thought I'd jump in, do a little bit on some of the new content, which I put in an update on the Kickstarter. So um, you can see it there. So it's basically one of the mini layers. So, as I've said before, and we've done a couple before, including the one level dwelling and the cave, uh, we've done those maps before. I think I actually put uh, the cave map on the uh, Facebook page. No worry, Mark, don't worry, there's, there's, there's a fair few, fair few streams over the, uh, what is it, how long have I been doing these now? Is it a year? Something like that, maybe not quite a year in doing these live streams. I was putting up a few videos and you know, I've always said, hi Stefan, how you doing? Thanks for your feedback, Stefan on IST by the way. I do appreciate that. I am gonna be doing some, uh, a kind of, quite a big update Going to add in a, a couple of things, and then we've got the expansion. Mark, good to see you. Office door shut while watching. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so, where was I? Yeah, we've done the, we've done a couple of um, we've done a couple of the layers before. There's mini layers, and here's another. 
So we're going to be having a look at that today and working through that. I am using the same character, um, uh, Cornelius Shearhad. He's a level two character and um, he has hack, incisive heft. He's got 310. He's 190 away from the next level. I think it's 500. Michael, good to see you. And um, we need to really to get him up to the next level. He has been f floundering around on the surface. We did some with this character, uh, did some exploration. That was a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago. And as a result of that, actually, and some other stuff uh, and things that I've been looking at, I kind of I decided that I need to put more tableage into the 2d6 realm so that's going to be uh to sort of add more options i think it was who was it jeff did you jeff may have suggested um that uh we needed potentially uh, an idea could be to have another table you roll on once the area you're exploring is larger than say four squares so i'm working up a, a larger table for that which will add a bit more exploration i've been working some narratives in as well um i want people to have goals and mini quests that they can work towards if they want to you know um so that's all coming along nicely now um as i was saying about about uh cornelius he is level two and we need 500 xp here to go up to level three. So we're not too far away. Hopefully we'll, we'll land that. He's got 20 health as well. Um, he's using a great ax, no runes. And we have some uh, treasure over here. We did buy a bishop's mantle. So we've got primary fours and fives, minus one damage. Um, secondary fours, minus one damage there uh, narrative moments uh, we've got a repairs quest tried to claim plot oh yes and we had the little the thing where we do some claiming but that didn't really go didn't go very well and we've got a throwing axe plus three and a fishing net we've got some teeth and fangs bones potion bottle um, siplo mushroom and amalico leaves so um he's got a few things he's got some he's got some malico leaves so he can do he can heal himself up potentially uh, if need be uh with a little bit anyway we've got a potion bottle and maybe some stuff here that you could use to make a sacrifice to uh, one of the gods but we aren't in that situation we are not in the subterranean world we are in this secluded opening so, um, just a little bit of a preface. When you're exploring the realm, every time you 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 well, you will reveal land on your on a turn, on a round, and the um, but each land has its own land type encounter table, and you're rolling that. And sometimes it may throw up. It may say, "Oh, there's a secluded opening." Now, there a secluded opening. What is a secluded opening? Well. That is basically, I was trying to think of something that would would be something other than a building. So we've got towers, um, we've got caves and dungeons. We've got the main dungeon, but the caves I felt was like a structure because it had walls and ceiling, even though it didn't actually make it, it's not a building. But um, I just thought, is there something within the landscape that I could use or, or create? And so I thought, what if you go into a forest there's an opening and it kind of might be having like rooms i thought right we're going to go with that we're going to go with that thought and see see, see how it how it goes and the um secluded opening came about and i've been working on this this week along with other stuff and uh, we will have a quick look at the rules quick uh brock hey tay big fan of your 2d6 system you inspire me to start working on my own solo dungeon delve system. Fantastic, Brock. That is great to hear. 
if I can be an inspiration for people, that is that's like one of the top goals. So that's fantastic. So let's have a quick look at the secluded opening now, um, and then we will work our way through one of the levels and do some do some mappage. Now I've got a slightly larger grid as well, so we can make the maps look a bit more detailed, and that's that's the plan. So the secluded opening. As I was explaining, um, is uh, is an opening that you might find, say, in a forest or a shrubland or something like that. Now the map size is six by fifteen, so we're going to move that across. So to the grid here, the grid, as they were saying, Tron, the grid. So we have, so we need six, and then we need fifteen. So this is a kind of like a long, it's a long s sequence, if you, if you like. So that was always my thinking. I wanted to try and create these slightly differently. So one, two, three. Uh, let's go in the middle here somewhere. Maybe we should just, yeah, let's, let's put it in the middle. What the hell does it matter? Let's do this. So one, so I will try and make these clearer so you guys can see darker in a sense. Four, five, six. Not very wide. You can see there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. All right. See it there. So that is our area. I'll just do the other sides. Now the dungeon that you would explore is say 20 by 20 or 25 by 25 so it's a substantially larger area than say the secluded opening that is the area Saab good to see you good evening so there is the size and it's going to fit in here and we will have a look at the um completing the the, the specialized rules okay each mini layer has special specialized rules so um there is a clear the chamber of creatures all right write the plot tag on the we write a plot tag up here we're just going to assume that um cornelius has found this secluded opening in his adventures on on the overland and um, you don't need light um, the uh, level of the enemy can you can get powerful creatures in these places um, Elliot good evening my friend um, tables some tables will be from the tables codex some will be the new tables from the back of here. Now, anybody can download this for a little play. If you do and you decide in your Facebook group, you can always upload that to uh, to there. If you are Facebook, Ebit, always the wrong account, lol. Ah, <laughs> Ebit again. Hey, Brian, how you doing? Good to see you, my friend. And um, so. I'll be refer referring to both. There are, no, there are no patrols in the secluded opening. Even though I put in here a secluded opening patrol table, which I think should be Did I do a secluded opening patrol table? Yes. So that is wrong. I'll take that out straight away. There are patrols. Retreating. You can retreat from creatures in this, okay? So when you do, the um, creature has one last attack before you run. The creature will not follow you. So if we get into a situation where I say facing something like a, a Talus, Talus Lotus level 9 or something stupid, level 7, and I'm just a level 2, then I'm going to run. Yeah, there's no point. You save the character, get out. Maybe you've got some loot, and especially Cornelius, he really does need some loot to expand his realm. 
So he's, he's heading in here thinking, right, I'm going to get some loot, maybe build some houses, get some get some people in my realm that will then improve the stuff that he owns, but also potentially in the future build him up to the legendary character that he he will he hopes to be. You do become intimidated if you do run. So if you are running, and I've gone over this before, if you come back, basically if you leave a lair un um, incomplete, so in a sense there's still monsters there, you get a um, a what do they? Oh, I forgot what they're called now. You, you get a penalty on your land. Uh, not I saw um, one of those, <laughs> and um, um, it basically means that you get a penalty within your land to the wellness, if you like. And if you build, those can build up. If you get lots of layers, which which basically aren't clear of creatures, word spreads, gets around. There's monsters in the vicinity. Your the leader hasn't done anything about it, so it kind of it, it imposes one pe a penalty, which isn't great. Um, but you can go back in and try and defeat the enemy, but you then become intimidated and it does additional damage. So there are definite definite penalties if you don't clear the creatures away. Oh, hello. Right now, interestingly, we have a new a new cat. This is our new cat here. This is Freya. <laughs> Freya is a four month old kitten and is very, very cute. Here she is. <laughs> yeah, I know. What are you up to, eh? Oh. And um, she wants to join the stream. This is Freya here, look, can you see? Uh, she's just come in here to sit down on the table. <laughs> so, we, so we got Freya um, about a, mu a month ago now. And she's a rescue cat. And um, we all the cats we've had in the past are rescue cats, and she's um, got her from the RSPCA, and the the previous owners were horrible to her. They put her back legs in boiling water, and you know, pretty pretty terrible. Um, but she is very cute, and. Uh, I do. We love her already, so that's a good thing. And I think it's we've been wanting to get one for a while, and I think it's one of these things, isn't it? It's it's kind of like a it's a mental health thing on, on some level. They kind of they kind of keep you company, especially I'm I'm on, on my own all day, and it's quite nice to uh, to have her around, even though she is a monkey. She's cheeky. Um, she's pretty smart actually. Our last cat, Pan, he was a big Tom and uh, a bit of a bully. So it's quite nice to have something that's a cat that's quite different to that. So in any case, anyway, distraction over. Let's let's carry on with this. So doors, there are no doors. Um, the rooms, there are no large rooms. In the final room, uh, you first roll to find out what creature is there and um, what specific mutation it has. So there's, there's, there's like a dark presence, a kind of um, an energy that um, persists through these openings. They're kind of dark places at times. And um, uh, Von Sock, how you doing my friend, says uh, their cat is watching with them. So that is fantastic. What's your cat called? Julian. Hi, Toby. Good to see you. Good to see you too, Julian. Welcome in. Um, so the first level of the dwelling is a two by two. And we need a little picture of that, actually, maybe. Maybe we'll just do it. It's just a two by two and with an exit in each wall. 
and you have no doubles, no no large rooms, and the walls are kind of broken. I'm going to try and work that up a bit with the drawing. Um, no large rooms, so if you roll doubles, you don't roll again, and rooms that aren't small rooms are just considered to be normal rooms, and we'll roll on the the uh, secluded opening rooms table, which we will have a look at. Um, there are 18 different types of room rather than 36 that you would get in a normal dungeon. Marmalade Sally, fantastic. Yeah, ours is just Freya or Frey Frey uh, after the, uh, the, the goddess. Um, and then we have uh, the little glossary here. So we've got TCX, which refers to, because this is part of the expansion, this will be referring to the tables codex. Level appropriate and per level of adventure when you see the PL. Fantastic. So, a little overview. And we're going to launch straight into it. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll find some loot. Uh, as I say before, I'm going to try and make these maps look a bit more detailed. We've got a slightly larger um, spacing on the um, on the grid here. I printed out an A5 on an A4, so it, whatever scale that is, it's slightly bigger. And we're going to have a look now. The first room, just a two by two, so I'm going to put that in. Oh, let's have a bit of light on this, shall we? There we go two by two so I'm gonna three and two on one side and then we're gonna have a a door okay could have a, a an, an exit in each wall now this means that um, the the first space you encounter on these is going to be corridors okay so you're gonna have little corridors that go up now, I haven't actually tested out this scale as yet. Our most grown kitten is called Bia, after the uh, Bia, Bia, after the Greek goddess of force. Slightly awkward out for her in the garden. Bia, is that Bia, Bia? How do you say that? Bia? Yeah, that is a bit weird, isn't it? Now, um, looking at this already so these could be corridors or they could be small spaces small rooms here leading on to other corridors or other rooms now it depends how big this first room is going to be so it's a kind of like it's kind of like a Warren type situation so you've got these kind of so these are going to be little corridors that lead up now, having that, let's put this in here. So I'm going to go up this first room here, and we're going to roll for size and see what we get. Oh, here we go. So we get a two by four. Let's put this in. How many exits do we got? We've got two exits. I'm going to do two by four here we'll put an exit in the north and then put an exit in here mm hmm mm, okay So we've got this room here. So, um, right, first of all, I've done this wrong. So firstly, I've just got carried away. We're gonna have um, kind of like a, a kind of broken wall, because this is the kind of the boundary. I've been thinking, I was just thinking about the actual layout there. And actually, <laughs> I've never done it quite this narrow before, so we may well adapt this space. May 
maybe we'll just have no exit squares. Let's have a look here. This is so you can imagine the boundary of, of the clearing is kind of going to be jagged where there's trees and vegetation kind of pushed up. It won't be flat, it'll be kind of broken, which is what this space is going to be. Just like that. Hopefully you can see that on there. Yeah. Yeah, I think interestingly it's interesting actually this cor this corridor i thought would work really nicely but actually what would probably benefit is i think what we'll do yeah you can probably put it in the corner and have one room there so it goes in the corner let's do that so this is kind of design design in 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 progress so this is this is an interesting one so what i'm going to do is i like the idea of this right so let's just we've got the two by four hey jim how you doing so we've got the two by four and then what we'll do is in the rule book i'm going to add this in here that the room starts on the left on the left of the map left corner yeah that'll add a bit of variance so because it's narrow you have to start over here so I'm gonna rub this out again this is designing I haven't actually tested this this yet so this is good entrance in corner allows you to spread out instead of squeezing it exactly Beat me to it long, yeah. So it's kind of like, so we've got the entrance over here. So, and then I'm gonna have one entrance up the wall there. And then one over here. Yeah, that's better. So in a sense, we're just in this space here and I rolled a two by four. So I will put that up here, which means there's two exits. I'm going to put one exit here and that comes up like that and then I'm going to put another exit up here so you're kind of along the side yeah this works hang on a sec I take my jumper off right now what I also feel is a, is a good thing to do is to actually take out the straight edges. If you're doing like a, a like a like a, a dungeon like this, take out the straight edges around the side and just replace them with the, the kind of the broken edge that would be the edge of the forest. I will update that on the on the file as well. All right. Fantastic. Okay. Which means we've got the entrance hall, which is that one there. So it's got two exits. Mm. yeah yeah vegetation following a wall Nick says yeah it's kind of like um, hey Paul how are you doing so um, kind of uh, sort of squeezed into a position so this space is in here I'm going to just Let's do these dark, these areas for the minute. Just to give a bit of definition to see exactly where we're going. Oh, 
Right, and let's find out what this first room is. As I say, I'm trying to put a bit more detail into that. Right, this can go all the way along here. I don't think much is going to go in there. Right. Yeah, I think that works better like that. We still really haven't entered the main testing phase yet for the game. That will come shortly when I once I've got a, a, a version that I'm I'm pleased with, and the the main tables are finished. The uh, engraving your own own runes won't be finished as yet. Certain little mechanical bits won't be done, but I'll be working on that while it's while it's being tested. Okay. Right, so here we go. What's in the room? Okay, let's roll 2d6 or d66. 24. 24 is wild grass. Wild grass. As soon as you enter, the open area, you sense a magical presence. The ground around you seems to vibrate, and as you move through the grass, it writhes up and tries to lash around your limbs. Roll a d6 and add your shift. We'll do that. Let's just put a bit of wild grass in here, shall we? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, baby, that is that's wild. <laughs> okay, wild grass. Let's put that along here. It could be actually named better, really, because <laughs> grass is wild, isn't it? <laughs> wild, baby. Here we are. Okay. Let's roll a d6. So we are testing our shift is plus two. Add your shift. Nate, just ordered these for map making. Fantastic. Good to hear, Nate. Thanks for that. Right. So wild grass. Uh, roll a d6. Four. Okay, on a seven or more, you wrestle free. So four. Okay, on a five or six, you lose, use up the rest of your turn to free yourself. On a four or lower, you feel the the veins burning your skin and lose two, two, the vines burning your skin and lose two health points per level while you manage to cut yourself for free. Oh, God damn it. Right, so I've had to, I've had to cut myself free. I didn't roll very well there. So that is four points gone. That is a bitch. Look at that. Let's have some more wild grass over here. Wild. I might just change that room to writhing grass or twisting grass or something like that. Right, there. And it got me. And then every time I go through that room, I'm going to have to tang tangling glass. No, tangling. Tangle. Tangle grass might be better. Tangle grass. I quite like the sound of that. Tangle grass. I'll put that on there. Just make a note of that on there. Because this is just all rough, it's just I can make notes. It's no problem. Right, so... No treasure, no enemies to face, unfortunately. I'm going to go this way here. So, um, we've got we've actually got three across, but quite a way up. So, let's have a look, see what we get. So, three by five, fantastic. I'm going to go, I'm going to bring this in here. And so, we've got one, two, three, four, five. And just have these. How many exits? one exit which goes up here which is absolutely fine 
and then um, I'm going to lose this edge here. And one, two, three, four, five. Okay, it fits in nicely down here. I can hear some of the my daughter's laughing in the background. They're laughing a lot at the cat at the moment. It's, she's hilarious. Okay. So we've got this quite a large room here. We've escaped the tangle grass with, uh, with injuries. And in fact, I'm kind of tempted to eat some malico leaves which will bring me back uh it's two isn't it malico is it two or one i can't remember malico leaves du, 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 du. before i leave that other space i might uh oh one hp so we'll do that we'll, we'll bring back the cross off the malico leaves Although, do I? I think it's a D3 for doses. Let's do that. So, only one dose. Um, we'll cross off the Malico leaves from my list there, and I will give myself 17 there just as I go in. And I will cut some grass um, from, I'm going to cut like a, a cord, a cord of, of, of grass. Some of that uh, as I was as I was cutting my way through that grass, so it's quite tough. It's almost like rope. So I've I've taken some of that. I'm just gonna try to get an edge of my pencil. I'm just gonna shade this in. It's it's clear. It's nicer to see on the screen there. Try and so using um, uh, improvising, inventive usage, as I call it. All right. There we go, and that's clearer to see. Um, not distracted tonight, but also hyped. They're just two-sided felt tips times 80 colors with wide and thin tips. Used watercolors before, but it warps my notepad. Great work as always, Toby. Not my product either. Fantastic. Well, I'm glad you're hyped about pens. I tell you what, I get very hyped about pen pens and stationery and all that type of stuff. So for me, it's mechanical pencils that really get me going and fountain pens right let's have a look <laughs> let's have a look what have we got what is in the room let's do it what room is this 34 that is a starling roost okay <coughs> excuse me Darling Roost. But it's not what it sounds. Several trees have grown up at the edge of the clearing here, and a flock of blood starlings take flight as you approach. A figure is tied to the trunk of the tree where the birds were. They appear injured, but may be alive. Okay. Brett, good to see you. You finally catch a stream. That's fantastic. I finally catch you in the stream, which is just as fantastic. Okay, let's. Um, so we've got. So we've got a someone tied to a tree. So we're going to try. I'm going to try and draw that in here. I've got some edge of a tree, maybe a trunk here, maybe a person tied to the tree here. to find out a bit more about this person I, th I think there's a tree here I'm going to put some there's some other trees around as well 
don't question my triage. Okay, there, and then maybe some blood, maybe some tracks leading up to the tree here. Who's who's doing this to this poor person? It's just colour in the back here. Don't know whether you can see these details. Here he is, here, okay. So, um, roll a d6 on a one to two. Well, I won't read them out. Let's see what happens. Roll a d6. Here we go. Three, hmm, three, three. They're injured. If you have some healing herbs, liberate one prisoner. <sighs> Yeah. No. I don't. I just used my Malico leaves. That would have saved his life. The irony. Right, let's have a look here. I don't have any potions either. So I used the Malico leaves. It saved me one point. But this poor old guy tied to the tree. It's like a it's it's like a weird twist of fate. That in here. I go up, the grass injures me, I feel compelled to use my Malico leaves, and then I find someone who may well have come through these wild grass, the tangled grass, to then be kind of um, ambushed and, and tied to a tree. And I could have saved him if I wasn't so concerned about one health point. God damn it. All right. <laughs> Um, so that's not going to work. So he unfortunately dies and I don't liberate a prisoner, which would have been handy because I could have gone back to the town and I would have been rewarded. Ah. Um, Brett has asked Nate uh, for a bit more details about those pens. Absolutely. I don't know whether it will let you post a link in the chat there. It might do, but... Um, Give it a go. It may be that Nick has to pass it. It's, it's like watching myself play. Indeed. Okay, so um, I'm going to add some other bits and pieces, bits of scenery here, which uh, are like a log maybe over this side. Now, um, nothing much can be done. I've uh, The guy doesn't say there's any items there. Um, he's obviously in a bad way um, and he dies he dies okay so we're just gonna have to venture north here and see what we get <laughs> I really needed that one HP Julian says I know we never know we may it may be that I survive by one HP right we're gonna go north three by six okay fantastic so we're gonna go into here and we're going to have it's going to go up to the wall here um one two three four five six okay all right fine i'm going to get rid of the straight line as we've been doing and just do some design here da, 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 da. how many exits Oh, uh, two. So we've got one going to the north here, and then one going to this one here. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it here, so we don't lose the shape, so we don't lose the room, and that is going to connect up with this one here. I think. Yes gonna have like a wall in the middle and then this kind of this situation like this here yeah that'd be fine and we'll get another room up in this space here all right that'll be the final room up here possibly and maybe a thrown axe could help the chap Oh, throwing axe. 
Maybe people were doing the throwing axes at him on the tree. That could well, very well be the situation. Right, so I've kind of I've jammed it in here. So we've got a little All right. Okay, what is this room up here? It's quite a good good size room, I feel. So um, let's have a roll. Um, sixty-six. Now, what is that? Let's have a look. Sixty-six. Hidden stash. All right. Let's um. Let's put that up here. Hidden stash. Hidden stash. This sounds good. Right. At first, the area seems empty, but then you notice marks in the grass to one side and realise there's something hidden further in. You head over and can search by rolling on H I L S T one, but as you do, there is movement behind you. Okay, so we are gonna just have a guy maybe come up behind us while I'm trying to search for the stash right let's just put some details in here um, we've got some marks in the grass maybe it's over here and a kind of like maybe some kind of revealed turf over here maybe it's been kind of dug up and then put back down or maybe there's a hole something in there like that okay I'm working a bit low there we go all right so um the hidden stash roll oh yes someone comes up behind you so we're gonna to have to roll for the per roll for the encounter first and see what the situation is this could be pretty tricky we've got um five it's a stranger okay if you survive you discover some zamoras leaves as well so um, we've got a stranger. So we've got two tables to roll on. The uh, the stranger table, but the stranger table is actually not in this one. It is a different, more complex table. So we'll ignore that. And we've got to say either warrior and a mystic or two bandits. All right, we're going to we'll do it that way. The stranger table is is part of the main book, so we won't get that out. Actually, it's the only one that isn't in this little booklet here, unfortunately. So either a one one to three is warrior mystic, four to six is the bandits. One to three is warrior and a mystic. All right, let's see whether we can survive this fight. <laughs> it, there's pen discussion going on in the chat there right um, let's get the mystic out where are you I think mystic is a level 2 I'm a level 2 and the warrior who is a level 1 where are you there we go. Okay, this is pretty tough. So these two versus my guy. Let's get the up there. That will kind of do. And then we've got the tracker here down the bottom there. How's that doing? That looks all right. So we've got round one. And my attack first. These guys are HP nine, but the Mystic does more damage and has more chance of deflecting damage. Although the stats looks their HP is similar, um, the Mystic has more powers. So I'm going to try and hit the Mystic first. Okay, cool. Been using some ah. 
matched. Here we go. I've got three, three, two, six, four. The Mystic um, interrupts on secondary twos, threes, fours, and fives. Okay. So twos and threes. So either hit, I always I lose one damage. So two, four. So I've got two shift and I cannot shift my dice. Even though that's quite an average dice roll, I can't shift it, unfortunately. Um, just, uh, Brett says, uh, uh, using my son's UK little air gun felt tip pen ball. Uh, just since, t uh, Brett, <laughs> Brett says, um, just since 2 6 Dungeon and then Rad Zone, I have a big set of colored pencils then wet eraser markers, and now I'm going to need those markers Nate mentioned. Good work, Nate. <laughs> right, so, Mystic, 2-2. Two, ah, two. Oh, Life Drain. So that is D6. Johnny, good to see you. Hi, Tabby, can't stay, but stopped by to say hi. Good to see you. Thanks for popping in, Johnny. Um, so... 2-2, two, two. Mystic has got a 2-2 two, two attack over here. Life drain. God damn it. D6 plus 1. This is very bad. Oh, well, that's okay. 1. So we've got a 2 damage here. 15. Thank God I ate those Malico leaves, eh? <laughs> and then the warrior attacks as well. 1, 2. Oh, my God. Uh. Ace. Oh, did I deflect any of that last damage? No, I didn't. Uh, one, two is slash. D6 minus two. Oh, my God. Two damage. Ah, oh, Nick Pro has a great 30-piece mechanical pencil set for mapping on Amazon for cheap. Comes in a nice leather pouch. Ooh. Gosh, they're beating the hell out of me, yeah. 35 bucks. Nick, put put that put that somewhere so that I, I can have a look at it as well, please. <laughs> they are beating the crap out of me. God damn it. Okay, so round two. I'm down to 13 health. I've got no, nothing that's going to help me. No. Oh, I've got a throwing axe. I should use the throwing axe. God. Ah. Oh. Should have used the throwing axe plus three. That would have been good. All right, let's try again. Right, my attack. One more round, and then if it doesn't work, I'm going to have to flee. And it has been a, an a, abysmal attempt. One five. No way. I can't shift. Can't shift it. Right, Mystic. Nice one, Nick. Scott, good to see you. Three, one. Mystic has. Shift one, just can't do it, thank heavens. And the warrior has, as well as two, two, and can shift to d6 minus two damage for two more damage. Oh my god. All right. So, This is not, this is looking very bad. I've got to try and take them down 9 HP. <sighs> one more round, one more round. Three, four. Okay, this is round three. Now I can hit here. I can't quite get to my incisive heft, which is D6 plus three damage. I can do a hack, which is D6 minus one because they 
because the um because of her ethereal body. Let's see what we do. Three damage to the mystic. Mystic. Let's just write this in here. Um, nine down to six and warrior. Um, has nine. All right. Chasing the Kraken. I love the shift mechanic. It really adds a level of fun over single roll to hit. Thank you, Chasing the Kraken. Yeah, I've just, it just was all about thinking about the nature of how people fight and moving bodies and, and trying to repositioning yourself. And that just kind of triggered him. I'm like, well, maybe I could do that with a dice and represent that. And it kind of worked out that way. I've talked about it a lot before. Nate saying hello to Mr. Bane, aka Scott. Uh, Scott's, if you haven't seen Scott's YouTube channel, I'll get in there and check it out. Ithacus Bane, I never say it quite right, but um, something like that. Okay, so I've just done some damage to the Mystic, made a note on the map here, and it's their turn to attack. Oh my god. I'm hoping for some kind of like mishap or something lucky to happen. But again, life drain, D6 plus one. This is not good. Three. Three damage. I'm down to eight. Brett says, I cannot wait for realms. When I started dungeon, I spent a good number of hours over two weeks diving down to level five. I need to pick it back up. Got distracted by other games. Brett, good to hear. Pretty sure my dice teleported to your table, Taby. Well, Brett, it's not looking good for me on this this one here. The warrior is going to attack six four doesn't hit. Right, so it is round four. I've got eight hit points, health points there. What's the chance of them both doing four damage? She could definitely do four damage if she rolls a life drain again. Mm. Oof, out of data and my plan resets tomorrow. Gotta go. Have a good week, Toby. We'll hear from you. You'll hear from me soon. Fantastic. I got distracted by Iron Sworn. Yeah, while I was dreaming of 2D6 Realm. While I'm dreaming of. <laughs> yes. That's karma for not saving that prisoner. Mark, you are so right. God damn it. So that warrior couldn't hit. Now, do I go forward? If I do this, I can, they're going to get four swipes at me. I'm just going to have to... I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to run. I'm fleeing. Okay, so let's just have a little recap of the fleeing mechanism. I have to come back another day with some... I've got again no loot in this this particular thing. We'll talk about this in a sec. This the way this has turned out. So fleeing, retreating. You can retreat from any fight. When you do so, you must flee the secluded opening, meaning it has not been cleared. When you escape the creature, it has one last attack as you turn and run. In this case, both will get to to get get to attack. Um. We need a DR Games Discord, or is there one I'm not aware of? There is, and the person who runs it, Nick, is he's just left, maybe? I don't know. Um, yeah, they get a free swing. The creature will follow you, will not follow you from the security opening, but remains in the current location. Note it on the map, which we, we would do. If you return to fight the creature, it is healed to full health, and you are intimidated. Um, the rooms you have cleared already remain cleared and you start the room you fled from. As described above, you become intimidated by a creature when you retreat and end a combat. If you then face the same creature, the same exact creature, although not you are not discouraged, you are intimidated. This causes a type of flinch reaction when defending you against them, meaning the creature you are intimidated by plus one damage per successful hit. There you go. 
So there's a there's a price. Um, hello, first time I got to watch your live stream, Julian. Good to have you here, my friend. Enjoying two D six so much. That is fantastic. If you can, don't forget to share that on any social media. Um, if you're on Board Game Geek or Facebook, if you can, you don't have to. Just enjoy it. It's fantastic. But um, any sharing is much appreciated. Um, Nate made a um, a longsword character, H Hazumi Hanzo longsword character, and ran Oriental Dungeon theme. I would happily recommend. Ah, nice. <laughs> nice one, Nate. 2D6 is one of the most addicting games that I've ever tried. <laughs> Thank you, Julian. All these lovely compliments. <laughs> I don't want to say. A agreed, Julian. Same with Rad Zone for me, Brett. I, I, we are doing some more stuff with Rad Zone this year. Um, we've got obviously lots of plans for 2D6 Dungeon. You know that 2D6 Realm is being written, so there's a big future for both those games. Got to try Rad Zone for sure, Brett. Get the box set. Well, you know, he said it, not me. <laughs> there is a box set. <laughs> right, so um, we're fleeing. So that means that these two guys, they get... Um, here, here, Brad. <laughs> two Julians. There are. Hey, Julian, meet Julian. <laughs> so these boys here... They've, they've defeated me. I'm going to run. I am not the most experienced character I, I should that has played 2D6 Realm before. So he's that's a level 2 character. So ideally, some, some of these realms are quite dangerous. You probably want to be like level 4, level 5. You know, you can't even be level 10 and go down and deal with these things much more easily. JB Moya! Wow, how are you doing? Uh, Brett, no, Brett. Uh, it's because JB, yes, because it was your your partner and you initials. So yes, Brett, you read it. Look. There you are. Thank you for doing that. So, we've been, been testing it a bit. <laughs> it's so confusing. You've got a Brett Watson and a Brett Moyer and a Julian Cortez and a Julian Palmer. What are we doing? <laughs> All right. Any other matches? Have we got any other names? Have we got any Jim? We've got Jims. How many, how many different Brett? I know. There's Bretts and it's, there's, are there two marks? I don't know. In any case, so they get each get a free swing. So uh, let's have a look here, and they you get use they get one plus one on the shift as well. How 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 bad is that? Right. So plus one. So yeah. Oh no, life drain. D six plus one. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. That's seven. That takes me down to one. This 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 guy better not hit. Oh my god. Th three five. No, he can't hit. <laughs> oh my god. Right. Okay. So he can't hit there. The warrior and the mystic stay in this place here. Oh my god, what an irony. What what irony? Yes! Julian's Julian's hit the nail on the head. So ah, what three rooms and we've got like a little little mini story here, okay? Let's go over this. Because that last that last bit is just fantastic. How how these things work out sometimes. Okay. So so the story of the secluded, um, I'm going to call it the mystic, the mystics, uh, uh, the, the mystics, um, uh, what, the mystics, come on, help me people, 
Uh, the Mystics Glen. Maybe the Mystics Glen. Let's call it that. Or the Mystics Camp. The Mystics. Mystics. Um, torture Camp. No, that's that's not my. Mysterium. I like it. The Mis. <laughs> the Mystics Camp. I'm going to go with Mystics Camp for the moment. We can we can change that. So right. Okay, so the character entered. He, he, Cornelius Shearhead, Governor Cornelius Shearhead, entered with twenty health points into the um, into this um, secluded opening, uh, which is one of the mini layers. Okay, and he's he's gone in here. He's gone up, and he's, and this grass has kind of come up and uh, uh, clung onto him. And we kind of we've kind of termed it as the tangle grass. So I'll rename that. And in here, um, a really bad result. Okay, the it, it it burns. It kind of it tears at his skin, and you can feel the burning. But he manages to cut himself free, and he crawls into this space here. And across the way, he sees a guy tied to the tree opposite and he, he heads in and he he's but before he does that he's like ah oh, these injuries so he take takes down some malico leaves and and he heals one health point uh, to sort of and then he gets to this guy he's then then he spots the guy tied to the tree and he's he's like oh God damn he's on the he's on the edge on the precipice and he, he hasn't got any healing herbs, and he goes up and takes him down from the tree and lays him on the ground, and the guy passes away. He's got no, he's got no possessions. He's been tortured by somebody. Who could that be? In any case, um, our valiant hero, he pushes onwards into the next area, and it, it's like this hidden stash area. So this is obviously some sort of um, the throwing axe. Oh, God damn it. Yeah, we, we could have used the throwing axe, or they were using a throwing axe on him. So he's he's so he used the malico leaves, to, and anyway he goes into and goes over and there's like a trail, and out from the bushes jump the mystic and a warrior. So the mystic's in charge is level two, and he's like let's take this guy down. These guys have probably been torturing this poor bloke tied to the tree. Okay, so. He's then, uh, uh, they're like, they're attacked and it's pretty hopeless because Mike, because Cornelius, bless him, he's, he's level two, miss it's level two, warriors level one and they're, they're, at, they're out, outpowered him and reduced him to eight hit points and then the, as, as Cornelius turns and runs, the mystic does one last slash, life drain, grabs his shoulder and he feels the, the kind of the energy drain from his body, Cornelius, and he, he falls to his knees and he, he jumps up and, and, and moves on because he's got one health point left and he makes his way out through to, back to the entrance and escapes. The irony being, he ate the Malico leave, leaves and that gave him one health point. If he'd used it on the guy on the tree, he would have died at the hands of the mystic and the warrior. Wow. It just all tied up really neatly there. Now that is there. He, Cornelius is going to go back. He's going to get buy himself maybe a, a potion or or get some something that's going to help a scroll maybe and go in and deal with these guys at a later date. And the Mystics camp stays in your realm. Okay, it stays. It stays in the land. Now I'd I'd mark it up with a plot, and I know on the map where it was. And I get an atrophy um, to my kingdom, and um, because they would know of the mystic's presence in the area, you see. Um, right, Brett. I tend to forget when I have to throwing axe. I realize I nearly died. Yes, I know. I, it's easy to do. It's, it's certainly very easy to do. That would be handy. All 
we're missing in our games is Toby narrating our quests. <laughs> Thank you, Brett. Oh, it, it's nice. It's just an enjoyable thing. Just throw yourself into it. Better have and not need than need and not have. Huh? Hmm. Um. Pint. Uh, Jeff, I made it, but my connection is not good right now, so I'll tune in later to see what I missed. Jeff, good to see you. Jeff, a.k.a. Lars. Um, we've just done this mini adventure. You better see how it plays out. It's quite fun, actually. Um, how about the, mystic, the mystic thicket? Possibly. Uh, that was so fun, that little delve. Thank you, Julian. Yeah, it was a little delve. Uh, the, the mystic thicket. Let's do it then. Let's, let's call it the mystic thicket. Because we don't know what's in the final room either which is probably going to be some sort of beast. It will be a beast. So there's another fight to come in this little area here. Maybe what we'll do is maybe we'll we'll come back in and um, try and, and do it next time. I don't think I've got any, I've got nothing to buy potions with, so really not in a great position. Um, James, good to see you. Hi all, it seems like I missed a chunk of this, but I can always watch it later after the stream. Yeah, James, it's... Um, basically a little adventure uh in the um in a secluded opening which is one of the mini layers for 2d6 realm so it's um it's definitely uh just a little thing so it's not like a massive dungeon or anything uh, it's quite condensed and we've had a nice little story actually come out of these three areas they're kind of linked together nicely um derek i get more taken with this game every stream what an imaginative game. Oh, Derek, thank you. That's really kind of you to say that. Um, well, I hope you... I hope, I hope everybody kind of sees the place that this comes from within me. And it sounds like a weird thing to say, but um, I, when I create games, I create games that I want to play. So... Um, like I've played many hundreds, thousands of games in my life uh, as I approach 50. And many of them I'm like, uh, I could, I think this might be better if it was like this. We all home rule, we all uh, add our own rules, don't we, to games. Um, but I just feel like um, if I can create games that have lots of content and options and randomness, that, that satisfies some need in me more. And what I've found is by doing that, it, it expands the narrative. And I've realized that the most important thing for a game like this, and for me in games when I experience them, is to have a, a, a compelling narrative. And so that is what I strive to do with these games, all my games. You know, um, Will you be doing another stream on Thursday or not until next week? No, I'll be doing another stream on Thursday. So, yeah. Another stream will be incoming for sure. Yeah. So that's one of, I think we've got, I think there's, how many have I got? I think there's maybe six or seven mini, mini layers. Um, so we may return to do some of this. I may just boost Cornelius up a little bit, maybe give him a healing potion, all his health back. And we'll go back in and see if we can finish this off, which will be fantastic. Thanks, Jim. Brett, that's kind of you. Um, nice. We'll try to watch when stream starts. <laughs> fantastic. Well, make sure you're following uh, on the YouTube. I think it's subscribe on the, to the YouTube channel. Um, and um, now the narrative... Julian says narrative adds thirty percent to forty percent of the thrill. Yeah, I think that some people aren't necessarily narrative isn't like their main thing. <clears throat> so some people get caught up in the mechanic, which is fine. Um, and the the mechanics 
some people say like Euro games. Uh, I'm right down the middle. I like I like a good mechanic, like the combat system here, which I spent quite a bit of time developing. And but yet, I also like the narrative, which is kind of swings more American kind of theme. But I'm sort of down the middle, so I like a, a bit of both. So hopefully that comes across. Um, I've taken to writing a log, numbering the rooms, describing my quest in first person and tracking HP stats for fights, etc. And of course, drawing the dungeon, which is 50% of love for me, Brett says. Yes. Well, I think a few of you will know that, a few of you know that my background sort of begins with drawing and, and art. And that's kind of my foundation. And I got back into drawing uh, about five years ago when I started drawing maps again. And then um, really deep down, I'm a, I'm a designer and writer. I know that people know me for drawing maps, but um, really I spend all my time writing and draw, uh, writing and, and designing and coming up with ideas, um, which uh, I, love, I love doing. And I just think about all the time. So, um, but the drawing the maps is always a lot of fun. It, it just I just imagine myself in the map in the location and it just adds flavor so why I try and add little details bring it bring it to life I will ink this in as well so we can have that on the Facebook page if you're if you're in the chat at the moment don't forget to click the like on the uh, YouTube video i don't say these things enough I, I watch other professional streamers i'm just like a part-time streamer um and they're saying guys don't forget to click the thumbs up on the youtube video we want to see more that i'm like okay i must remember to try and say that um i decided to get a copy of 2d6 because i saw the combat system on youtube and the shift mechanics was the one thing that convinced me to get it immediately uh, it was probably um Daniel's video at Dungeon Dive, shout out, shout out to Dungeon, to uh, Daniel, the Dungeon Dive, uh, fantastic, the most, probably the most knowledgeable um, reviewer of, and designer of, of he's, he's a reviewer, he's designing his own game now, but he's been reviewing video, uh, games like this for years now, and he's fantastic, so I would recommend you get in there and watch Daniel's channel, he is a star and I, I listen to everything he says. He's he's a great guy. Um, drawing the dungeon is a lot of fun too. Yes. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Smash all the buttons. James says thank you, James. <laughs> yeah. This, thank you, Brett. Joined the stream late, but um, site to get back and watch this when stream is done. Can't wait for realms to ship. Yes. Um, De Niro, I we we're getting closer. We're getting closer. I'm I'm telling you now. It's one of these things. You've you've got to determine to make Two D Six Realm a great game. The challenge of creating an overland game is far more involved. I'm discovering than the dungeon. It's not. It's neither are easy. But with a dungeon, you have the target. You've got levels. You've got rooms. You go down and up. You go down and you get deeper, deeper, deeper. With a overland, you're just on the just on the flat. You're on the flat. So how are you going to deal with that? What interests are you going to add in? How are you going to make people want to continue exploring? You know, what is um, how is the quest mechanism going to work within that structure? So I have those in place for the dungeon, but how does that work overland? So these are things I have to really think about. So I'm adding in extra tables and making it richer. Yes, it is going to be a bit, just a bit more crunchy than 2D6 Dungeon, but I think it's going to pay off. And we've got to, it's going to be going into a period of testing. Um, and my very patient testers who are waiting to get their hands on it, it will be there soon. And hopefully they're still interested and they will, and they will have a good period where we can. Have have a good old to and fro, and that will be going up. On, stuff will be going up on Facebook as well, so people can see how it's going. And and then once that's done, 
I'll, I'll rework the, uh, the the book so that it's neat and tidy. And then, yeah, proofreaders. Um, yes, well, we have we have a fair few proofreaders, Brett. But drop me an email at toby at drgames.co.uk um, and I'll, I'll add you to the list, my friend. The um, um, and then once that's done, all neat, we'll release the digital version. And then probably just a short period, people looking at it, and then we will print it. So it has taken longer, and I do apologise to everybody, but I think as these projects, as you work them, things reveal themselves that you don't necessarily expect. And I've never designed an overland game before, so that's been a really kind of new experience in that respect. So... Um, what is timing looking like on the realms? Yes. So that's Brett. That's kind of where we're at with it. For me, I just randomly saw 2D6 group on Facebook while browsing print and play games. Fantastic. Ended up buying the full digital version and enjoying the game. That's really good. Interesting to hear how you how you saw it because Facebook's been a massive part of the growth of the game. So that's been that's fantastic. I have D100 space and dungeon and I can only imagine what you have to put into the overland mechanics and all that yes it is it is a challenge and uh, um julian says guys the 2d6 dungeon quality of the hard book is outstanding and highly recommended to get a copy well thank you thank you julian um jeff it'll be worth the wait jeff's probably the most patient person there in the stream thank you jeff for all your time um Alan, your games are great, so take your time and deliver a fantastic product. Thank you, Alan. That's very kind of you to say. Now, Julian says hardcover. I mean, yes, we kind of we kind of saw what you what you meant there, my friend. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, there are there are some other elements involved with with how game design. It's very much because I spend so much time woven into the design it becomes like part of you and it on some level you 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 don't want to release it because it's you want it to be better all the time so i get a little bit of that going on so it's harder for me to release it but I'm, i know i'm going to have to um and then it with dungeon i could release like a level or two with this once i release it it's just the whole thing and I realised before I released some stuff and some brilliant, some brilliant testers. My brilliant testers did some maps and stuff, and that really helped promote it. But what I realised now is that really didn't give a, a a clear vision of how the game will play. And when I do now release it back to the testers, which has been a while since they've had a good look at it, um, it's going to be much more of a complete thing, so they get much more of a, an experience. And then that will be handier for me as well. You know, so there, there's lots, so much to learn, and um, there's a lot of psychology behind it as well. I feel. I think most of us are fine with things taking longer as long as we get regular updates. Yes, you're really good at that. Thanks, James. I do try. Sometimes there's not a huge amount in them because I'm just kind of working away at it. But um, oh, I'm constantly, I constantly try and be available. That's part of the reason why I do these streams, not just to sort of to show you this stuff, but also to sort of be forward facing and you know face people's questions and explain what the situation is you know i wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you guys the all the backing and the and the success of the kickstarts has facilitated this me able to making me able to create these games which is fantastic i guess i'll buy the realm buy when realm is released so i can get them all in one package fantastic I'll be looking to buy hardcover versions, but not sure if shipping will be easy. Julian, we really, we do, we ship really well, actually. We have really, um, really good rates getting stuff to people and we cover any extra taxes that might come at your end, if that might be the case. And also, um, we don't charge a huge amount because we have a really good deal with the Royal Mail. We, we have a business account and it allows us to reduce our postage costs. 
so you can you 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 can actually see that and it's delivered by Toby and uh, I got my copy super fast th fantastic Mark yes most engaging developer I've ever oh man I'm getting all the compliments today thank you that's very kind of you um Julian I've got a bit of a I do have a bit of an advantage I have spent many years being a teacher before being a games designer so I'm used to talking to people and putting myself out there um, of course it's very different when it's something personal like this but uh, I'm still fairly experienced when it comes to talking to people and um, so that is definitely right I'm not someone I've been I've kind of ha I've learned the skills put it that way um, uh, it's fine just ask Toby to provide a tracking code uh, we we don't actually right okay we don't provide tracking codes um, we don't do tracking the reason the reason why we don't do tracking is because actually it, it adds extra cost to the postage for you guys so we'd have to transfer that cost um, when we have tracked in the past and an item's gone missing it doesn't actually tell us much it doesn't it disappears in the system. It says it reached there and then nothing happens. There's not much you can do. If you don't get a pass in a certain time, we just send you out another one. It's cheaper that way for us in the long run. So if, say, three or four weeks down the line, you haven't got your package, we just send you out another one. And um, maybe send it on a higher, higher, spend a bit more on it to get it to you. You know, um, we ship out hundreds, thousands of packages really we found this to be the best way rather than transferring a, a bigger cost to people through putting tracking on everything so that's why we don't do it and we get we get questions sometimes what's the tracking number it doesn't matter here's your estimate date if it hasn't arrived within a week or two after that then we'll send you another one it's no problem and that is much cheaper for us and actually much less stressful in a sense having to try and track down something um I can see it it will be worth the wait thank you paul some creators are terrible about providing even monthly updates your weekly ones are more than i expect communication thank you the great customer service and very friend oh man guys stop it <laughs> uh well you know I I just appreciate I you know for me being part of the community as well is fantastic. Getting to know people they we don't meet physically. Hopefully that might change a bit because we're looking to get across to America. So we may come across for Gen Con this year, but we definitely come across for Gen Con next year. Um, we're going to probably coincide it maybe with six weeks in in America. I don't know how that will work for the business. We'll just have to see, but we may do something like that next year um so that is that is the thing right so there is also a couple of things i want to mention before before we finish so uh one thing is they're on board game geek bbg there is a thing called the golden geek awards this allows you to nominate games from this year so it includes 2D6 Dungeon. So 2023, so it's last year in a sense. Um, for awards. So, you know, if you're feeling the vibe for the game at the moment, it doesn't cost anything to do this. It would be super wicked if you can pop to Board Game Geek uh, and just nominate, if you don't mind me asking, uh, nominate uh, 2D6 Dungeon um for small indie company things like the these awards are um just really useful you know to get the word out there i don't have any kind of advertising budget um i don't have any minions out there working for me to promote um any employed employees i should say but i have you guys and um hopefully um you can get into into board game geek and, and nominate 2d6 dungeon for solo game 
or whatever you feel. So that would be that would be fantastic. What's the website to go to to nominate a site? Well, if you go, if you just type in Board Game Geek into uh, the the and go to the Board Game Geek. So um, it must be just bbg.com or whatever. Um, it's on the it's it's on the front page. It's just like Golden Geek Awards. You just click on it. So you should be having travel access in Malaysia has been inaccessible for a while now. Not sure if the website has been blocked by the government or what. Wow. I'm on not on the I'm not a board game supporter and don't have geek gold, but I hope you win. Found it. Yeah, it's just on the front page. Click on it. I don't even know whether you have to have the golden geek gold. You don't have to do anything like that. It's just it's just selecting. Uh, and just go on and it's free and it's like clicking thumbs up but more important you know it it supports small small gaming companies small small indie companies like mine because it's just me uh, working full time and my wife who has a who has a full time job outside this and she does part time stuff she helps she does the logistics uh, she's logistics manager and uh, and <laughs> She does a lots of stuff. She's fantastic, my wife. Um, very patient. Oh, die. Yeah, on the upper right side of the homepage. Yeah, it's upper left. Could be upper left, Brett. It's just there. It's like a big banner. And it'll be there. It's only there for a little while. I think it's the 30th or the 25th or something like that. It comes down. And then they add up all the nominations. And it's, it's voted by the public. So that would be awesome. You are amazing guys i think we're going to call it there uh, it's the usual hour and a half stream uh, we had fantastic little adventure there that was that was that was amazing and cornelius got away <laughs> he fled them he got out of the mystic thicket so he's he's a he's saved i don't see any restrictions on nominating but they do have some on voting to vote uh to avoid voter for it yes for, yes multiple voting cool okay guys take care i'll be back on thursday maybe we'll finish off this little this little thicket here and um, have some other discussions um yeah joe yes best time spent together thank you guys you take care julian julian scott good to see you Loving the videos, by the way. Um, thanks, Stefan. You guys are awesome. And I will catch up with you very soon. Take care.